Hey mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I want to share with you a couple of specimens of Meropilus sumstenia. This is a mushroom known as the black staining polypore. And uh, it is this really kind of interesting, lumpy, leafy, uh, fairly robust mushroom. It is edible. Uh, these specimens I'm not going to eat because they are both uh, very dirty and also a little bit on the whiffy side. Uh, but this is a mushroom when you find it when it's young and tender, you can, uh, you know, eat it and it's relatively tasty. Uh, but identification wise, this is a fairly good beginner mushroom because it is uh, fairly distinct and its lookalikes are also edible. And, uh, and in fact, the lookalikes are more desirable from, an, you know, in general than uh, Meropilus sumstenia. So uh, anyway, I will talk to you about identifying it and where to find it. But before I do that, I want to do a quick plug for a Mushroom Hunting Foundations class I'm doing. It is a live stream on YouTube. I'm doing it on the uh, 19th of June, 2022 at 2 p.m. Eastern. And uh, so I will cover where to find mushrooms, how to find mushrooms, uh, recommendations for how to not lock yourself out of your car or get lost in the woods, and then also some of the common edible, beautiful, and toxic uh, species that are uh, to be found in the southeastern U.S., especially during our summer mushroom season. So uh, with no further ado, let's talk a little bit more about the black staining polypore. So polypores, if you're not familiar, is uh, a reference to the uh, fertile surface of the fruiting body. So some mushrooms have gills. Those are little like blade-like, uh, you know, surfaces underneath. This a uh, classic sort of cap and stem mushroom has gills underneath. A polypore, uh, by contrast, has these little uh, porous undersurfaces. So it's a, a little bit on the rough side, and this is where the spores come from. So in the case of the black staining polypore and a lot of other polypores, it forms sort of uh, rosettes and it will, it will grow at the base of, of trees. So in this case, this is a wood decomposer. So it grows, um, you know, at the bases of oak trees typically. And you'll just find them popping up really pretty rapidly for the size that they reach. And they have these uh, sort of different leaf uh, type structures. So you end up with this, you know, kind of interesting lumpy leafy sometimes feathery looking uh, mushroom and I say feathery because this mushroom's common name besides black staining polypore which you can already see why black staining polypore is super duper descriptive some people call this rooster of the woods that is uh, a reference to sort of a collection of species that have um, poultry inspired names that are polypore so we have hen of the woods, Griffola frondosa. That's also known as maitake and is a wonderful mushroom that we find in the fall uh, with oak. There's also chicken of the woods, which is a, um, there's a collection of different lady porous species and that's the genus. And they have a sort of nice chickeny flavor, but they also uh, don't look anything at all like chickens. And so they're bright orange, but they're kind of leafy. And uh, now we have Rooster of the Woods, I guess, is sort of an extension of this, uh, this common nomenclature. I'm not crazy about it. I tend to call it the black staining polypore because if I'm going to learn uh, you know, a common name, I usually want to learn one that's super descriptive and it doesn't get more descriptive than, you know, fruiting body type and primary fruiting body feature, which is the black staining. So uh, as you can see, as you handle the mushroom, it starts to uh, turn this blackish brown color really quickly. In the case of, uh, you know, a mushroom that's been up for a little bit of time, you'll see that that just starts to happen, you know, sort of um, as the mushroom, well, it rained uh, pretty significantly last night. So, uh, you know, it definitely will have this sort of two-toned appearance. When it is uh, not stained and when you'd be the most interested in eating it is when it's much more of this sort of like, um, you know, blonde uh, sort of tan color. And this one is a little bit on the orangey side, but you know, when you collect it and you're interested in, in consuming it, it should be nice and, uh, 
and um, uh, tender, which this one isn't as tender as I thought it might be. So, uh, but when you open up the fruiting body, so what you'll you know immediately notice besides the black staining is that it has this sort of like um, stringy consistency. And as the mushroom gets older, and this is the case also with chicken of the woods, as it gets older, it gets stringier and more fibrous. And as that happens, it becomes harder to cook and a little bit harder to enjoy and consume. Uh, nonetheless, I really like finding this mushroom because it's just so big and bulbous and kind of in your face. I also enjoy mushrooms that have fast or radical or interesting staining reactions. And, uh, you know, certainly the black staining on this is, um, you know, not unique, but it is so very uh, bold that... Not as bold as traffic in Raleigh, North Carolina on a Saturday, but bold nonetheless. Uh, so, you know, this is uh, definitely a mushroom worth finding, putting in your personal catalog of species that you have identified. Uh, even though it is a wood decomposer and not, you know, a, uh, a mutualist or a mycorrhizal species, you will find it growing in the same spot year after year. Uh, and that also applies to chicken of the woods and hen of the woods. So, you know, they are... Um, definitely like they're, they're decomposers, but they tend to have enough to decompose that you will find them uh, for at least a few seasons. So um, that's all I have to say about that one. I do want to highlight the other mushroom that I found that's a decomposer here that I'm really, really pleased with. To the best of my estimation, I'm going to call this Agaricus Oracolor group. And so that's uh, the golden agaricus group. There's agar Agaricus is a genus that uh, contains a lot of different species. The wild ones can be pretty uh, difficult to identify, especially if you're like me and you're in the field and you're not using a microscope and you don't have reagents to like figure out what kind of staining reactions it has. Uh, you know, when different chemicals come into contact with it. But uh, this is certainly uh, an agaricus mushroom and it's really beautiful insofar as it shows uh, what is called a partial veil. So, you know, most mushrooms uh, that have gills, uh, well, not most, actually, there's a lot of them that don't. I totally misspoke. There's a lot of mushrooms that have what's called a partial veil. And so basically it's what I'm pointing to with my pinky. It's a little protective layer of tissue that uh, covers the gills as the mushroom matures. And Agaricus is a, a genus that contains, you know, por um, uh, portobello mushrooms, Agaricus bisporus. Uh, you also have some really uh, wonderful almond aromad, uh, wild agaricus mushrooms. But many times when you find them, you'll have a ring on the stalk that is the remainder of that partial veil. And so to find a specimen where it's totally intact and you can just sort of peel it right off. And then underneath you can see that you have uh, sort of a pinky colored, ooh, I'm getting very poor focus point here. Sorry about that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's like a light color, but as uh, agaricus mushrooms start to mature, you get uh, pink starts to come in on those gills, and then uh, they turn a chocolatey brown, and that's the spore color. And so, like, if you have um, a uh, portobello mushroom from the store, and it's got those really rich, dark, chocolatey brown, uh, you know, gills, that's the color that agaricus gills ultimately turn when the mushroom is fully mature and opened up. But when they're closed and you still have that partial veil intact, you have this lighter color, this pinkiness. Uh, and another feature that I really like about this is that it has this nice patterning on the top. So you have sort of a pale colored mushroom with these, uh, you know, almost tawny, they're not scales, but a scaly looking uh, sort of surface. And I'm, again, not getting the very best image here. And then a couple of little baby yellow ones. So um, again, Agaricus or a color group, more or less, uh, but you know, another uh, decomposer that I have found at the base of these oak trees. So I am excited that mushroom season is underway. It's been a little bit fickle because it's been a little bit dry, uh, but nonetheless, I hope you're able to find lots of interesting things, identify them, enjoy, appreciate them, and uh, we'll see you around.